Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Pat Gelsinger. Good morning, good morning. Welcome to VMworld 2017. With 20,000 plus here on site in Vegas and thousands more online. In fact, if we could bring up the house lights now, and for those online, if you could just see everybody here in the auditorium, now, be, be a little crazy. A wave, shake, yeah. Woo yeah, you, you want to be here in person next year, and you're missing a lot by not being here, but thanks for joining online. On behalf of VMware, it is my pleasure to have you with us today. And this, my sixth VMworld. And it was on this stage five years ago that I was received the honor of being the CEO of this great company, but also of this great community and ecosystem. And for me, I just say thank you for giving me such an honor of being able to take this role. We've been following the events of the closely in the situation in Texas, and can you believe 50 inches of rain and the devastation from Hurricane Harvey? And you know, our thoughts and heartfelt wishes and prayers go out to everyone in that effective region. And I would just encourage each one of you to consider making a generous donation to organizations like the Red Cross in consideration for that devastation that they're having there. You know, we've reached an interesting moment in the evolution of technology, and each one of us as technologies have just always been sort of fascinated by science fiction, but we're seeing science fiction become science fact for our everyday use. And, you know, if we go to science fiction, how many of you remember the movie Alien, where you saw Ellen Ripley, you know, put on that exoskeleton to go out and fight the uh, uh, alien in that movie? Well, now, here we are in 2017, and what was science fiction is now everyday fact for South Korean ship and steel workers strapping on their exoskeleton and becoming superhuman. Or maybe from the world of science fiction, this, you know, how, how many of you remember the famous beam me up Scotty from Kirk when he's in a tough situation? And while we might not be quite ready for beam me up, you know, as Einstein called quantum entanglement, you know, spooky action at a distance, we've now been able to, Chinese researchers have been able to demonstrate, you know, photon quantum entanglement from Earth to a satellite 300 miles away. Not quite beam me up yet, but amazing, the spooky action now at a large distance. Hollywood also loves this idea of you know, genetically modified insects, and we've seen this with ants, bees, flies, and spiders. Well, a science fact today, CRISPR, this ability to permanently modify DNA structures, is being used to create Zika-resistant mosquitoes to maybe combat that in a fundamental and permanent way. I guess for me personally, I'm looking for the you know, mosquito modification that it causes it not to bite me in the future. But as we consider these in this era of radical scientific change, the question is, what's the most profound change of them all? And I'd say of them all, maybe it's our expectations, our every day. You know, now my one-year-old granddaughter, Abigail, and by the way, she is the cutest one-year-old, I will admit. You know, she pinches, swipes, and pokes when she gets my phone or tablet in her hand. Can you believe that at one years old? It's hard to believe that our perspective has changed so radically in such a short period of time. You know, and a great example, how many of you have been in a self-driving car, right? A number of you? Now, you know, as I've talked to people and I did it myself a couple of times, the most amazing thing is you get in the car and you're like, whoa! nobody's at the wheel, right? You're just in this almost fearful frightening. And then, right, at about minute two through five, fierce questioning. How does this work? What are the sensors doing? What happens if we lose internet connectivity? You know, what happens if a car swerves in front of me? You know, when I'm a geek, this intense questioning probably took me five minutes, not three. But then, somewhere around minute four or five, 
fierce boredom sets in. This car drives slower and more cautiously than my grandmother on Sunday. <laughs> when are we going to get there? And it's a metaphor for what's happening in our age. You know, we see this dynamic playing out industry by industry by industry. Simply put, tech is leaving the nest of tech. And we see it across every one of these where they're having their breakout moments. And these are just five representative industries, but in every case, we're seeing tech-driven models restructure these entire industries from the front office to the back office. And just a couple of these examples. You know, how many of you remember your first digital audio experience, maybe from Real Media or Real Audio or Winamp? You remember that? Right? And you know, that was about 20 years ago. And amazingly, the traditional enterprise, or, uh, media and entertainment industry, movies, books, you know, concerts, right, has continued to grow, but it's flatlined. And now, right, last year, digital media and entertainment surpassed it, and it's on its way to be a trillion dollar industry. We just crossed the halfway point. And I, you know, as a, you know, a data-driven guy, it's always, when do we hit halfway? And we're now halfway there. And we're excited as we're working with a number of companies and you know, media and entertainment companies on their transformation. And one of those, Scripps Networks, we'll hear a little bit more from them later today. You know, their uh, you know, lifestyle uh, entertainment and food network, cooking channel, travel channel, those are, you know, the ones my wife likes, right? And, uh, you know, huge global demand for their programming and now looking for a private and hybrid cloud experience to enable their environment uh, globally. You know, if you think about e-commerce, again, it was about 20 years ago. You know, companies like Amazon and Alibaba, and I was shocked when I saw this statistic that even as fast and as disruptive and change as occurred in that area, we're one-tenth there. And even though digital may be guiding choices and purchases, still the industry is only one-tenth changed. Stunning. Or maybe, and, and these are some of the customers that we're working with and, you know, in that area. Nike, right? You know, the ability to design your own shoe, either in the store or online. I've done mine. Have you done yours yet? And in other industries, we still have a long way to go. And maybe healthcare is one that we're on the cusp of transformation. As we think about that, you know, I think of good industries are 50-50 on this metric. 50% of IT is going into new customer experiences and 50% into keeping the lights on. In Medicare, we're 50%, I mean, we're at 80% today. Quality of life, life expectancy is improving dramatically, but a long way to go in what tech can do in this area. And later today, we'll have Medtronic on stage with us to give their story of how they're changing this picture. But in each one of these, if we take a step back, we've seen a fundamental shift and what labor and lifestyle means. 200 years ago, 85 plus percent of the Americans were consumed in agriculture. This is my heritage. I'm from a farming family on the East Coast. My world, you know, one time, uh, you know, maybe 15 years ago, you know, I was uh, at a table with all of my uncles at a family reunion. My dad's a family of 10, and here are all of his uncles and uncle-in-laws. Not one of them have all of their fingers. I think this change on this slide is just fine. The quality of life improvements, the improved efficiency that have resulted. Farming is not a bad life, but it is a very tough life. And as we think about manufacturing, you know, we're not about bringing jobs back, we're about automating them away so that we can create higher value roles and changing industry. And as we look at that industry framework today, the rest of the economy, now you know, almost nine out of 10 jobs in services, in retail, in healthcare, we're about creating higher value, higher paying jobs in the future and changing the quality of life as a result. You know, and as I think about, uh, some have said, the three R's of education, read, write, and arithmetic. In the future, it's read, write, code, and arithmetic. And as we think about those industries, you know, every one of them has a common theme. It's about the apps. Fundamentally, customers need to reshape their businesses around the customer experience and the applications and software skills to do that. 
That's what are making the winners and losers of tomorrow. And the essence of the VMware strategy is enabling businesses to create and deliver apps for their businesses. And we summarize it in this simple picture that brings together all the things that we're doing. Any device, any application, any cloud with intrinsic security. And we're broadening that picture and we're now seeing our technologies and what we have done as an industry reach into telco networks. And with these things called NFV, network function virtualization, they're almost entirely unvirtualized and now here we are reaching in and helping them virtualize and get the efficiencies in their core networks. Also with edge, tech is breaking out of tech, but we're stretching and reaching further to have all of these machine connected devices. And you know, this is year 36, I'm entering year 37 in the industries. I know I look like I'm 35, but year 37 in my career in the industry and you know as you've been in the industry that long you start to detect patterns and one of those is what I'll call the shift from centralization to decentralization you know we started with the mainframe uh, computer right and then uh, client server and internet and mini computer and we've seen this ebb and flow from centralization to decentralization and the cloud has been a force of centralization over the last decade or so. And IRT and Edge, right, pushes us back toward more decentralization, as many of these Edge devices require a capability and data generation at the Edge. You know, we think of this in the, you know, a simple phrase, cloud to Edge, and where the physical world connects with the digital world. Devices producing massive amounts of data, much of it local, explosion of apps and services, an increasing surface area for security and exploits. And this is why we announced at uh, Dell EMC World earlier this year, the VMware Pulse set of IoT technologies for factories, for smart cities, for oil rigs. And we're thrilled that our partnership with Fujitsu has now expanded to be working with Toyota, the largest car manufacturer in the world, to deliver Pulse IoT and a beta of what that next generation in-car experience can be, right, as we control and manage it. Millions of cars, billions of devices. Wow, our industry is reaching further than ever before. You know, and looking again at this picture, let's dig in a little bit on any app, any device portion of it. You know, apps fundamentally are about unleashing the potential of your most valuable resource. And our goal is simple, give you access to those applications on any device and any modality and usage model of your choice. Now, this is the picture of what that app world looks like today. It's complex and messy. And as you think about it in your organizations, you realize that not only is it messy, but it also crosses lots of silos inside of your organization in different areas. And much of that complexity isn't focused on the total solution. VMware's strategy in this space is put it all together. And that's what Workspace ONE is about, bringing all of those pieces together to deliver consumer simple, but enterprise secure. And Workspace ONE has three fundamental elements. One, apps and identity. Consistent environment across whatever app with single sign-on, multi-factor authentication. That's powerful. Second, for the operations environment, consistent management and security and IT is in control, delivered either on-premise or as a service. And this is where Horizon Air and what we've done for delivering that as a service and Areas like our Azure partnership have gone extremely well. Excitement about this kind of capability across all the devices and usages. And across desktop and mobility. AirWatch began its journey with Apple and iOS devices. We then expanded that to include Android, a deepening of that relationship with Samsung. And then a move into right, uh, Windows devices and Microsoft has declared that SCCM and that management model is now dead. 
move on to a modern unified endpoint management architecture. And at Dell EMC World, a deepening of our relationship with Dell and integrating Workspace ONE directly with Dell clients. Last week with Chromebooks and now the exclusive partner with them in managing Chromebook environments. And today, we are broadening the world's broadest ecosystem yet again. And we're excited to announce today that Dion Wexler, the CEO of HPI, has partnered with us to embrace Workspace ONE. Let's hear from Dion right now. Hello everyone at VMworld 2017. HP and VMware are longtime partners. Today, I'm excited to announce an even deeper extension of our collaboration. During your event, we're announcing that VMware's unified endpoint management solution will be incorporated into HP's device as a service offering. VMware's endpoint management solution will be a key component of our managed service offering enabling customers to use real-time actionable insights and world-class security monitoring. In partnership with VMware, we're delivering the next generation of device usage. Today is an exciting day for both of our companies. Thanks to VMware, and together, let's keep reinventing. Thank you, Dion, and the HP team. And while, while I love talking about uh, Workspace ONE, it's even better to hear directly from customers and their experience. And to help facilitate that conversation, it's my pleasure to have Sanjay Poonin, Vice, uh, uh, the COO of Customer Operations, uh, be able to facilitate that conversation today with Capital ONE. Let's hear from Capital ONE. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's great to, to go from sort of main stage to our field corner here. I'm going to play sort of Anderson Cooper uh, in talking to our customer, Jennifer Manry, who is Managing Vice President of End User Computing, Identity and Access Management at Capital One. And Jennifer, before we start, I've got to say I'm a big fan of Samuel Jackson, and I had to do the obligatory, what's in your wallet? Love it. So I've got the Capital One card here. Uh, you guys have been a phenomenal innovator, one of the first to like adopt cloud. I remember seeing... Rob Alexander and AWS Conference, you're doing a lot with them, more on that later. But also in the end user world, this whole digital transformation and the way in biz which business and IT trans transforms, you guys have been visionaries. How is that playing out at Capital One? Yeah, well, I think a lot of people think of us um, as the what's in your wallet people. They think of us as a credit card company or a bank. That's actually not how we see ourselves. We actually think of ourselves as a technology company that happens to also be a bank. Uh, but you don't you know, get to call yourselves just a technology company and poof, be a technology company. I mean, we really focus on delivering very rich, digital, immersive experiences to our consumers, anticipating what they need. But we realized several years ago, in order to be able to do that, we really needed to change the way we operate and deliver software to um, our consumers. And so that really changed uh, several years ago with us taking a sharp right turn away from waterfall delivery, moving to Agile and DevOps and outfitting our employees with the things that they needed to deliver those experiences. Um, and we've been on a huge transformative journey ever since then, um, really embracing new technology, like you said, cloud, and hiring thousands of software engineers and designers to be able to continue our progress forward in that transformation. It's amazing. Here's a financial services company talking like a tech company with De Agile and DevOps. Now, how has that played out in the end user landscape? Give us a sense of you've got phones, you've got tablets, you've got laptops and desktops. We just announced this deal. With yeah. HP, you must be pretty excited about that too, given that's in your landscape. How is that device proliferation look at, um, at, at Capital One? Sure, I think when we started looking at becoming more like a technology company, we also had the realization that you can't um, have people come into the enterprise and not have a great experience with the tools and software that we give to them to do their jobs. And we have now seen that the expectations are changing in the workforce driven largely by the experiences people have in their personal and consumer lives. And they want to come into the enterprise and feel that they can operate with their colleagues in the same way they operate with their friends and family outside. 
And so we, we realized that we needed to rip out and replace a lot of the technology we have and provide much more modern capabilities to our associates. And part of that started with devices. You know, we've got a very heterogeneous device landscape. We've got Macs and Windows machines. We've got different kinds of mobile devices. And with that comes the overhead of having to be able to manage those uh, effectively, but we really were striving to unify that experience. We want everyone to have a great experience no matter what device they choose to work on. And frankly, our associates are carrying multiple devices, so we want them to be as effective and proficient on their uh, laptop as they are on their mobile phone. Um, so we've actually been using great um, tools provided to us by VMware, whether it be AirWatch to deliver these secure experiences to our mobile users, um, and also Workspace ONE to unify and make a consistent experience across those endpoints. So we want to make sure that people have a great experience no matter what device they use, and that we can administer and manage those endpoints really effectively. So through using the VMware tools and the partnerships that we've had, we've been able to really achieve some of our great end user goals as well. So you've got iOS, you've got Android, you've you got, got Windows it. 10, from a combination of AirWatch, Workspace 10, all unified. But you also got some you know, legacy Windows applications that you'll need to kind of use maybe VDI desktop as a service, and you're now using Horizon Cloud. We are. Um, how does that usage play out too, so that you've got you know, full digital user experience? We, I think it, it plays out in the way that we, that consistent unified experience across those devices, whether it's the virtual environment or the actual physical environment, we're able to deliver a very consistent experience and manage all of those endpoints in a really consistent way, and so that's how that's really coming to life for us. And Jennifer, this has been a partnership, right? When Absolutely. I first got to meet you, it's not always easy. There are bumps in the road. Talk a little bit about the partnership. That's very important to us at VMware. It's not just a client relationship. It's a partnership. Sure. How has that played out? And I, I think it's important to bring that up. I, I rarely look for a software provider to come in and just hand me licenses and say, go forth and prosper and be great at this. I look for strategic partnerships where we can see a collective win in what we're doing, and that's certainly what I've gotten from VMware. I mean, our engineers who know Capital One requirements and what we need the most sit alongside of Workspace One engineers and we talk about things, we share expertise across them, and we develop in a collaborative way the proof of concepts and pilots that we've used to drive towards our progress to achieving these goals. And so it's very much an investment of both teams in a collective win. VMware gets to see their product be successful at Capital One and we get to achieve some of our really audacious and user goals using the tools. Well, you've been a visionary. It's always a pleasure connecting a customer directly with the, the engineers uh, and you know, pushing us into some of these areas like the cloud. Let's, as we wrap up, give us a little bit of vision about where you see this all headed. Sure. Um, how is this end user landscape going to look like over the course of the next several years? Yeah. I mean, I think everyone here knows that technology is changing so very quickly. And as I mentioned, our associates' expectations change as their experiences happen differently in their personal lives. And so we are constantly in the business of assessing and reassessing the capabilities we provide out to our associates, knowing that we've got to infuse the latest and greatest technology advancements into their experience, because that's what helps them create the experiences for our customers. So things like machine learning, better mobile experiences, those all come to light for us from an associate perspective, but then play out in how we deliver our experiences to our consumers. That's great. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there you hear it from a visionary and an incredible brand, Capital One. I hope that's what you all have in your wallets. But thank you, Jennifer. Let's thank give you. it up for Jennifer. Thank you. Thank you very much. Back to you, Pat. It's a great story, and thank you, Jennifer, for joining us here on stage. You know, as we now look more at that vision, let's go to cloud, but start with private cloud. You know, talk about mind-blowing technologies. Remember your first experience with Workstation or ESX? And you were just like, wow, how does that work? How can you do that through this piece of software? Right? And I, I remember my first exposure, Diane and Mendel, the founders of VMware, they came to see me, and I was running the server business for Intel at the time. Right? And so they come walk into my office, and they start describing how 10 servers can become one or 20 server chips can become just two. And I'm like, Diane, you, you know what business I run, don't you? <laughs> but, the, but they were absolutely undeterred, right? They kept selling me to partner and work with them, you know, in this mind-boggling technology. And I wasn't alone in my reaction. In fact, many of the early VMware salespeople, they would describe this disbelief, anger, frustration, euph euphorium that would emerge from their first customer experience. And in fact, what we found was some early footage from some of those first VMware sales calls. And you know, if we could just show you one of those right now.
<laughs> you, you see that high-priced talent that we brought on stage to do this with us? Steve Herod, right, you know, CTO for uh, VMware for many years and still a great friend of ours. You know, and you know, from that early, awesome, mind-boggling experience, we've gone on and we've now virtualized the entire data center. And we've turned it into a cloud, a private cloud, but it's not cloud-like easy. And you've told us that it's too hard. And our job is to make it easy to deploy, easy to, to manage. And today we're excited to uh, deliver Skyline predictive support to further improve that management experience and also easy to secure. And you know, you might remember this picture of the past. And you know, in fact, uh, just a couple of weeks ago, I was cleaning out my garage and I found my electronics toolbox. You know, and it's like, you know, that was when I was a technician. And I opened it up, I found that, you know, that uh, soldering iron was in there, and I found my voltmeter, and I replaced the batteries, and it's still working. I was so excited right at the time. You know, and, and I remember, you know, I built a PC with my son, right? It was a water-cooled, overclocked, dual graphics machine. I mean, whoa, you know, it was good, right? And in fact, we just retired it a couple of years ago. Today, there's a better way. We expect a fully integrated system that just works. And that's our philosophy as we approach the space now. We have to make the private cloud easier. And that's what VMware Cloud Foundation is all about. Yeah, you can buy the pieces, the compute virtualization network and you know, uh, uh, storage, or you can get the full thing put together. And that's what VMware Cloud Foundation bringing those pieces together with automated lifecycle management. And today we're thrilled to be delivering version 2.2 of VMware Cloud Foundation, the latest of all of the VMware software technologies, lifecycle management delivered both on-premise and as the foundational technology for in the cloud as well. And we also see that another key step in this area is what we'll call hyperconverge, bringing together the hardware and the software. And today, vSAN has over 10,000 customers. Just incredible. We're adding over 100 customers a week to this product. And with vSAN ready nodes, building world-class hardware relationships, now we have 12 server partners, two OEM partners, and over 250 separate SKUs. Also, vSAN and, you know, is a killer technology. And I know when I was running you know, uh, chips for uh, Intel, we were always searching for that killer application or use case that would show off our latest uh, silicon. Well, vSAN is it for 14G and the latest Intel scalable server chips, you know, and the latest of all flash storage, nothing shows it off better than vSAN. But of course, the best way to buy it is as a complete appliance. And VxRail, now the number one HCI appliance at Dell EMC, Today, Dell and EMC are also announcing VRAC SDDC, the latest version, taking advantage of VMware Cloud Foundation 2.2 and the latest of PowerEdge and Flash Story. Really an awesome platform. And we continue to improve our core foundational technology, vSphere 6.5, with improved backup, integrated log insight, latest of vSAN capabilities, vCenter now for high availability, and as you'll hear about a little bit later in our talk, for security as well. So lots is happening in the area of private cloud. But let's now turn to public cloud. And you might be the only person on the planet who doesn't know about the partnership that we announced with Amazon late last year. And today, we're delivering on that promise. Please join me in welcoming Andy Jassy, CEO of AWS, to the stage of VMworld. <laughs> Andy, it really is great to have you here with us today. Thank you for having us. We've been working together for a long time to get to today, so it's great to be here with all of you. Yeah, you know, any journey, hundreds of engineers working on things, it is thrilling to get to this day and announce the availability of VMware Cloud on AWS starting now. And this really is the ultimate hybrid solution you know, that we've developed together, the ability to run any application on vSphere and now be able to seamlessly take that private cloud environment and move it into the public cloud and use VMware software that you're familiar with 
to manage both your on-premise as well as your in-the-cloud infrastructure as well. Yeah, and as more and more mainstream enterprises have started making their long-term plans in the cloud, they would say to us, it's great that you've built a bunch of tools that make it easy for us to run our on-premises data centers alongside AWS, but since most of the world is virtualized on VMware, and since AWS and VMware haven't really done anything to integrate seamlessly, you're forcing us into this binary choice where either we move to the cloud with AWS and we can't use the VMware tools we've been using for a long time, or we stick with the VMware tools and it's much harder to use AWS in the cloud. And they hated this binary decision that we were forcing on them. And so VMware Cloud on AWS gives them the best of both worlds. It gives them the world's leading private cloud provider alongside easily being able to be used with the world's uh, leading public cloud provider. It's, uh, the offering is really the only one that's operated and managed by VMware, and uh, you can use your licenses to leverage here, and so people are pretty fired up about this. Yeah, yeah, we're really excited about it, but also our customers are excited about it as well. Yeah, there's, there's a lot to be excited about. You know, as I mentioned earlier, as a customer, if you can use the same tools that you've been using to manage your on-premises infrastructure and easily run that with AWS, it's very attractive. And then you get the same operational consistency and compatibility you're used to using with this offering. You don't have to kind of adopt a brand new operating model for your on-premises infrastructure. You don't have to adopt a new model just to be able to get consistency between your on-premises and your cloud environments. You can use vCenter and the same tools you're used to running your infrastructure and run those easily alongside AWS. And then at the same time, it's much more cost effective than what you could do otherwise. I think if you look at some of the other options out there for this type of offering, it costs a few hundred thousand dollars to spin up a few instances plus professional services. And then to do anything meaningful, you're looking at a couple million dollars. Yick. So this is much more cost effective what we're doing together. <laughs> and And here's a sampling of some of the early customers. And you know, we've just gotten great reaction from our Lighthouse and Beta customers as well. And some of their use cases are quite compelling as well. For instance, Moody's, the credit rating service. Uh, you know, it's a great example customer looking at cloud migration. You know, and they're looking to capture those cost efficiencies that you were just describing, some of the agility but they didn't want to refactor their current applications and were struggling with how they could move to the cloud without having to re-platform and re-architect their applications. And VMware Cloud on AWS solved that for them, a low risk pass to the cloud with minimal disruption to their IT and business operations. Yeah, or, or you can look at a company like Rico, which makes printers and cameras, and they have a bunch of compute intensive R&D they do where they're gonna use the offering to do cyclical, cyclical computing and disaster recovery. Yeah, and you know, another customer, Scripps Networks that I referenced earlier in the uh, keynote. You know, and as they expand globally, they're interested in hybrid services to execute their next generation app structure, even as they're using it to scale up more rapidly internationally. It's how do they build their next generation app services as well. So that's part of what they're looking at for this capability. You know, and we're also seeing a lot of enthusiasm from our partner ecosystem, key system integrators, and DXC is a great example of that, where DXC, really the formation of CSC along with the HP uh, uh, services uh, business coming together. They were a great partner of yours for Amazon yeah. as well. They've been a great partner of ours as well. And now as we bring our capabilities together, they're excited to really lead in making this hybrid service offering something that they can bring to market yeah. in a powerful way. And uh, you know, Accenture and Deloitte and Capgemini and Rackspace, those are some other systems integrators that are really excited about the offering and have really gotten themselves prepared to help all of you to start taking advantage of it. Yeah, and as you see on the slide here as well, even though this is just the initial availability of the service, we already have a rich ecosystem of tech partners who are bringing their capabilities specifically designed and validated for this service offering already in the marketplace. So, you know, let's talk about the roadmap a little bit and where we're going, because this, you know, as a cloud service, you know, initial availability is just the beginning, right? And even though it's available today in one availability zone in the West region, we'll be moving that to the East Coast region and then internationally. And our commitment is to have it available globally that before the end of next year, every one of your availability zones is a center for the VMware cloud service as well. Yeah, well, any type of roadmap 
for us, is, and I'm sure it's true for you as well, is driven by what all of you tell us matters to you. And, and you know, the vast majority of what we build as a whole in AWS is driven by what customers want. And the same will be true here. We'll listen very closely to what you'd like to see us continue to build together and do so. And there's some obvious ones, geographic expansion, mm -hmm. as Pat just mentioned, and there's a whole bunch of ways that I think together, along with our partners, we'll help you get going on top of the offering. But you know, I'd also say that most of these types of partnerships that you see tend to be optical and really marketing flash rather than substance. There's not much going on with the teams beneath the announcement. And I would say the opposite is really true here. I think you know, from the very start, both Pat and I have been deeply involved and our senior leaders and really the teams up and down have, I think, a pretty unusual working relationship where they've gotten a lot done in a short amount of time very collaboratively, which I think bodes well for our whole view that we will not only be able to listen to what you care about and iterate on your behalf, but also it's just really the beginning of what we can do together. Yeah, and you know, as the engineering teams, marketing teams, we're really just scratching the surface of what we're gonna do yeah. together, Andy. Great. This is really thrilling. Well, thank you so much to the VMworld audience. Thank you, Andy, for joining us. You honor us by your presence here. Let's again thank Andy Jassy. Thank you. At this time last year, we described the VMware cloud strategy. And as we've just covered, make private cloud easy. You challenged us as customers to say, you know, develop these major partnerships with the cloud providers, just like we heard about from Andy now with our AWS partnership. You know, also expand our cloud partner network. And last year we had IBM on stage and we're seeing great momentum from that partnership. But you've also said there's other services where we need to embrace and take advantage of native cloud services and make those available as well. And responding to that, we launched an effort that really listens to what CEO, CIOs are telling us around the world. And we've heard this consistently from Asia, Europe, and Americas. You know, help us to get there faster. Help our existing apps. Help us embrace the future and do that securely as well. And the response to that is what we'll call our VMware cloud services that enable a consistent infrastructure right, across these cloud environments, what you just heard with Amazon and IBM, partners like VirtuStream and what we're doing to make SAP you know, and mission critical clouds available, OVH leading in the hybrid services uh, area with us, but also embracing native services on other clouds like Azure or Google Cloud, and helping to have consistent operational environments even for native services in those areas. And even though we love if everybody built to our stack, we realize that we have an opportunity to respond to customers' desires and, and uniquely enable experience across all clouds. And that's what VMware Cloud Services is all about. And today, I'm excited to announce the availability of our first seven VMware cloud services. Services that give you increased visibility across clouds. That offers NSX as a common networking and security layer across multiple clouds. That helps you allocate and manage uh, resources across private and public to discover and introspect and get metrics across those environments while simultaneously increasing the security for the data and applications. VMware Cloud Services. So as we look at this, we really see the VMware Cloud Strategy is about these four things. Consistent infrastructure across clouds. Consistent operations across any cloud. The richest network of VMware cloud-based global service provider partners. And finally, IT agility while reducing complexity and risk. So again, let's hear from a customer who's taken advantage of this. Right now, let's hear from Medtronic. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're back with our second customer in this little field corner. I love this little dual stage thing going on, and I'm really honored to have another great brand 
Pure. Uh, Medtronic needs no introduction, an incredible brand in medical technology. And with me is Kareen Semmer, head of IT hosting transformation and modernization pr program. Kareen, it's great to have you. Thank you, Sandra. Uh, I think you've got one of your props here. So tell us about this wonderful medical technology. Yeah, so what we have here today is an MRI sure scan. It's just one of many of the medical devices that we have. And a little known fact that you may not know, last year 65 million people benefited from a Medtronic device. That's one every two seconds. That's awesome. We feel so honored to be working with, a, uh, with customers who are doing so much to help save people's lives. Maybe we can start there. Tell us a little bit about the business and IT transformation that Medtronic has been going through. Because you're a phenomenal brand, but you've also been transforming the company.